Hello guys, welcome back to a new video and with this video we will be getting back on the introduction to Tamil Jewelry series and in this episode we will be dealing with distended lobe ornaments more commonly known as ear gauges. Ear gauges or you know ear lobe stretching is an aesthetic jewelry tradition that goes back potentially millennia, thousands of years and in terms of actual physical specimens we think, yeah, if I'm right, we go back as far as to ancient Egypt in terms of, you know, Tutankhamun, for example. And in terms of artwork, we have the notorious Chola bronzes. We have the Sigri frescoes from Sri Lanka. We have, you know, any depiction of Gautama Buddha. We have paintings from the pretty much any, you know, painting from South India, ancient painting from South India, Chera, Chola, Pandya, Pallava. You see that. You see it in depictions of, you know, uh, Hindu deities. And in terms of photography, you also see it in pictures of women, women from, you know, colonial India as well. And in terms of, you know, actual practice, we still see it being practiced in Tamil Nadu as well, in South India, as, as you know, as small as the practice is. We see it in like, you know, pretty much any indigenous tribe in like uh, the South Asian, Southeast Asian circle. And oh, I forgot to mention in terms of paintings, we also see it in, uh, you know, depictions of Aztecs and Mayas, you know, indigenous uh, South Americans, indigenous tribes, basically, it's an indigenous practice that's for some reason simultaneously seen all throughout the world. And also, this is something that really, you know, surprised me. It's that it's an aesthetic tradition that's been taken up by a lot of people by the in the West, which is very interesting to me because, you know, colonialism and everything to get the sources out of the way i will have to say that you know i'm splitting the video into two parts the first part is the more recent part you know and for that it's just knowledge that i've accumulated you know through many sources over the course of time but for the second part is the ancient part you know the jewelry that we only pretty much see in statues we see it in um, hindu iconography and for those you know specimens i will be going forward with the uh, Ganapati Sapati's person. So first up we have the Puchikudu. So the Puchikudu can be split into two words, you know, the base two root Tamil words, Puchi and Kudu. Puchi meaning insect and Kudu meaning a nest. So it basically resembles an insect nest. Insect <laughs> nest. And uh, it's in the form of a tube where you, you know, you loop the lobe through, or really, you know, that's where you, it hangs on the lobe. And it's very interesting. I've also featured it in one of my pieces called um, Kerati. I link the post as well to this in the description. And if you see that it's long, it's tubular. And in the end of it, you see sort of these structures which really resemble the, I want to say Kundalam. No, not the Kundalam, uh, the Kamandalam. You see on the top of, you know, uh, Hindu temples, specifically South Indian Tamil style temples. Tamil and Telugu style temples. Uh, ear lobe stretching tradition is something that's really dying out in Tamil Nadu, something I really wish would make a revival um, as traditionally faithful as it is, as possible, because it's such a beautiful tradition. And uh, like I said, the for pretty much every specimen I'm going to mention in the first part of this video, I've rarely seen it on real people and mostly I've only seen it in, you know, through media, like in terms of photos, through Pinterest, Google, you know, archives, that's how I usually come across. So the next earring is perhaps the most popular, you know, uh, specimen and it's also used as an umbrella term for generally Tamil distended lobe, uh, you know, ornaments. So that is the Tandati. So Tandati is perhaps the most popular design, the most popular iteration. And oftentimes, I even I used to think that every distended low bearing was just a different kind of Tandati. I didn't know that Tandati is one specific type and other you know, forms had their own names. It has a slope at the top and it sort of features this triangle in one corner. And below you have the structure, sort of this cuboidal shape, you know, like a, like a sort of three dimensional cubist um, structure, like a kutti tower almost, like a small tower. And sometimes the square on the bottom is decorated with the flower, you know, the bottom plate, sort of decorated with the flower. Next up, we will be seeing the rest of the, the rest of the specimens that we'll be seeing, you know, the rest of the types that we'll be seeing, you know, from here on out till the end of the section. 
are you know sort of these ring sort of earrings meaning that the earrings before you know sad tandetti and the uh, the puchi kudu the puchi kudu was a tube and the tandetti had an extra structure at the bottom and the loop wasn't exactly very uniform either and were not was it a complete loop but these you know earrings that i'm going to mention they heavily feature you know again uh there the central structure is a loop rather than a loop i'd call it a ring the first is the tadangam so the tadangam a lot of people call it a thodu and i'll come to why uh, an a related fact about that later so the tadangam is sort of this huge you know ear tunnel like the ones that you know the most common iteration in the west but the tadangam it's the sort of you know ear tunnel but the walls are very thick and the general application is that after you wear the tadangam you loop a jimiki on it. so you know those like uh, hoop plus jimiki combo that you see a lot in you know uh, punjabi folk culture you see it here except the loop goes over in you know into the hole in the tadangam i've only seen it in colonial era pictures i don't know if the you know the application goes back further i'll check it out but uh, so far i've only seen it in you know photos taken by you know white explorers western explorers now another interesting fact about the tadangam is that it might be a condensed form of the kudambai i'll talk about the kudambai later but coming back the tadangam like i said it's also called a todu and it's you can see that shiva is wearing it so though the shiva the one that shiva is wearing i would more uh, i would prefer to call it a kudambai but like i said it seems that there is a sort of interchangeability you know certain degree of it between the kudambai the tadangam and the todu but um like yes so these three terms in terms of aesthetics and in terms of linguistics these three terms sort of converge when it comes to shiva but uh, the kudambai i'm going to call it the kudambai that shiva's wearing it's usually you know made of a conch shell if i'm right which lends him the name shankar if i'm correct and the name he also has a name called todudiya sevian in tamil and it seems that that word comes from the other name of the tadangam or the kudambai which is the tod next we have the sori the sori is also called a savudi but the sori is just like it's a much smaller compared to the you know to its counterparts to its you know cousins but it's much smaller and it features a sort of like triangle it features triangles and circles in its ornamentation all of the principles you know application principles is very similar throughout the you know throughout this whole you know range that i'm talking about a loop that opens up and a screw that you screw into secure it so it's very simple that way next we have the mudich so the mudich quite literally in tamil means knot so it's sort of it's a bit thicker than the sori or the savudi and it features you know huge balls on either side i i featured the mudich in one of my cards for the tarot card series called the world in tamil it's called vayagam i'll you know i'll present the link for that in the description as well present link i'll you know link it in the description and if i'm right i've also featured it in the post i did for christmas and uh, i'll link that post as well if you want me let me know i'll make a separate video about that specific post as well that's the general uh, structure of the mudich and a more elaborate form a much more elaborate mudich would be the ananda mudich i used to think it was ananda mudich for some reason but ananta comes from the tamil word which means no end which means endless ananta no way endless so it literally means endless knot the ananda mudich is sort of this like a more uh, ornamental form of the mudich so like the mudich it has a loop you know like a fabric like patterns but at the end you see a much more elaborate design of sort of this 3d triangular tower and i don't um, if i'm right i think that it resembles once again the hindu geometric drawings like the shri yantra but i'm not sure and it's just it looks so beautiful it's like these layers of triangles just like layer you know um just one layer after another before we move on to the ancient jewelry section 
I realized that I have I have forgotten the pambadam. So the pambadam, I I used to really you know confuse it with the tandati because they both sort of the 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 placement of the loop you know the form of the loop is very similar, but the pambadam is very different because once again this is a specimen where we can split the name. We it splits into pambu and padam. and pamb means snake and padam means the hood of the snake you usually see in the, you know the cobra family so this uh, design is supposed to emulate a snake guarding its eggs the eggs represented by the golden you know balls the orbs now in terms of you know i've also i've seen pictures of you know pairing these distinct lobe ornaments usually the most common part is either the mudichu or the tanditi or the pambadam and the tanditi we are done with the more recently traditional jewelry and we will be moving on to the more ancient specimens and the first one up will be the one that i mentioned before which is the kudambai so the kudambai is also called a patrakundla so kudambai is very interesting because the kudambai is sort of thinner compared to the tadangam in terms of proportion but it's much bigger and it like it keeps the ear open it keeps the ear big keeps your stretched which is also uh, the kudambai we also see a sort of modern sort of equivalence in uh, the western tradition of you know ear piercing as well the more modern one the one up next is called the kadipu so taking you know the inspiration you know uh, by going by what ganapati sapati is you know saying the it's sort of this wheel I, I'm not going to say wheel. I suppose a disc would be better. It's sort of the, this disc that goes that has a groove in the middle. That's where the ear lobe sits. So I think we the sort of this Kerala uh, earrings that we see in Raja Ravi Varma's paintings, for example, I think that's where you know they took inspiration from. Uh, from this earring, this earring is called the Kadipu. So I don't know why it's called the Kadipu. It's called the probably called that because of the groove, you know. that you know that sort of lines the center of this earring but there are uh, the book specifies that it's like uh, flat that it's you know both of the discs are flat but the specimens that we see in terms of kerala the ones that we see in like you know uh, nair women from kerala they sort of had this more like dome like shape with the groove in the middle so that's probably an offshoot of the kadipu i'm not sure but it would make sense if that were the case but finally we have the the kurai so i used to think that it was kurai meaning a tube but i uh, i didn't know that it was actually a kurai thankfully the book is in tamil so it helped me you know line you know like correct pronunciation the most popular form of it is called the magara kurai so the magara kurai uh, features the makara which is a mythical sort of uh, creature this monster that also the vehicle of you know the goddess ganga and varuna so since it features a magara it's called the magara kore and this also finds you know relevance in the in the saiva iconography because shiva only wears the kodambai in one year on the other year he wears the magara kore it's sort of this loop sort of the spiral that ends with the magara there's this other kind of kolai there are three types of kolai that uh, sapadi talks about one is a magara kolai one is a vyara kolai and the final one is the simma kolai simma kolai as the name suggests it features the lion so you have it's a ring that has sort of this a uh, lion motif in the center finally we'll be seeing the vyara kurai so when i heard vyaram vyaran i immediately thought okay it must be saturn but how does that make sense but turns out vyaran also is a, is a moniker for the snake so i was like okay so that makes sense because it's sort of this coil and you uh, you see the snake at the end at the end of it or the snake itself is a coil that is called the vyara kurai All right people with this we have come to the end of this video I wanted to keep it as short as snappy as I could hopefully I can make it even shorter next time around and once again thank you for watching if you like as usual if you have any references you'd like me to have I've linked my email as well as my socials below reach out to me there follow me and follow me everywhere and I've linked the posts that I mentioned as well in the description go check out the tarot card series that I'm doing I recently released colored versions of them And next video will be about you know um, the torso, the jewelry we've that that is worn on the torso, 
and it's going to be quite long compared to this because it's a huge dictionary of you know it's a huge vocabulary of jewelry but yes that being said if you agree with me if you disagree with me don't hesitate to let me know pop up on instagram use the comment section and yes hope to see you all next time